at the edge of the runway All she lays on the hood and pretends That all her old boyfriends are leaving town On those departing planes And it's a long drive back home no one outside, just an old radio whistling static down the line. But she sees a light up ahead, gleaming from a revival tent. Yeah, she wants to hear the crowd and feel the warmth on her skin. Coming back, they felt a presence in the room. And Bishop Walker stepped down, raised his hands, and said, The rain and city lights are bright, but they're empty as hell. We were worried about you, darling. Them folks who ride for themselves So lay into my arms And know you find it back home Yeah, you find it back <laughs> uh, welcome to Monotonia. Uh, this is Rumi here with Henry Dunkel. Henry. Oh, great to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming around. Um, so you played two songs for us today, um, and I was wondering if you'd like to tell us a little bit about where those songs came from and why you chose to play those. Yeah. Um, Before the War is about, uh, there's an ending scene to, I believe, the movie's called Gold Diggers. It's uh, from the late 30s. And there's a song that the movie ends on, and it's called Remember My Forgotten Man. And uh, there's this just amazing scenery of these guys marching back from uh, World War I on treadmills on a big soundstage. And mm -hmm. look it up on Vimeo. Um, but that song's just about, like, uh, people feeling uh, not taken care of and everything. And so it goes from uh, World War I to the Great Depression and covers that subject matter and that. That scene always stuck in my mind, and so I kind of wanted to um, capture that in my own way and do something kind of inspired by that. Mm -hmm. um, Lorraine was actually, I think one of my friends uh, was just going to pick somebody up at the airport, and when we were teenagers, we used to go down to Tallapoosa Street, and uh, you still can, I think, do this. <laughs> You can go park off of Tallapoosa Street and get your car pretty close to one of the runways where private planes come in, and you can watch them fly in. And that's just a memory that was, that scene and that idea was always with me, and I go, oh, I mean, you know, I haven't uh, written anything about that experience, but then t what's typical with what I like to do is, um, so I'm not constrained by own, my own personal experience, I really like to do, create a story, because that's just... Uh, more liberating and fun. It's something to play with and toy around with. You can make the story more interesting. And so you take like maybe a personal experience or something that ex inspires you like a line of poetry and then tease it out to, and see where it can go because it then it's a choose your own adventure approach. You can take it anywhere. Um, and so I've always kind of stayed away from personal ex experiences like because you go you can't alter the story, then you're just a liar. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to revisit personal experiences if they're good or bad or anything sometimes, because uh, then, then you're going up on stage singing about uh, breaking up with somebody. I was, what was it? One night I was at Bottle Tree, and uh, she goes, and this is why I stick with uh, narrative stories. Uh, she goes, this song's about uh, when I broke off my ex-boyfriend and quit smoking. And I go, 
Gosh, I'd hate to play that song every night. <laughs> Revisit. So now i got to think about my ex-boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. Every single night I go on stage, it's like you're carrying baggage with you everywhere you go. Um, and so it's like if, if you get somebody out of your life, don't write a song about them. Just move on. Uh, <laughs> write a song about an ideal lover or something. Uh, or your an aspirational idea, I guess. Uh, but anyways. So that always stuck with me when I go, man, I don't want to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just make up stuff. And it's fun too. You sing about the post post World War One shell shock and depression. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think maybe it's just because of the I like I look at a lot of American classics painting and I read a lot of classic American literature, and there's something about like this time period uh, in the twenties and stuff that's especially if you go look at old films from the thirties, just the way they. Uh, like, I'll give it, just, like, the dialogue was uh, more imaginative and, like, thought-provoking. Because um, they'll say the craziest things. Uh, it was a Betty Davis movie um, one time when I saw this. She had the craziest line. She goes, she was talking to a guy, and she goes, Oh, you're like the little, uh, you're, you're like the Chinese poet who uh, died uh, trying to kiss the reflection <laughs> of the moon in a lake. And I go, I'm not doing it justice, but it was something along this line. And I go... What? Uh, and so this, uh, and so I looked it up, and it, the guy was called like Li Po, and he uh, he wrote a bunch of Chinese poetry about uh, being on a canoe and drinking and fishing and stuff, and it was all pretty funny. But supposedly, I think the fable or story—I don't know how true it is—that uh, he drowned uh, trying to kiss the reflections of the moon one night on his boat. And I go, "Wow, guys, that's a starting line for a song right there. This is—you got a premise, so you got something to work with there." But yeah, that, uh, and I, I don't know, maybe I'm just, maybe it's because I read too much older stuff and I li mostly listen to older music. I don't know how to create a universal song that has modern references in it. It doesn't, it sounds, it immediately sounds dated because everything's like moving at such a rapid pace now. Mm -hmm. I've tried to keep some of the symbolism and visual aspects maybe like uh, more abstract or, you know, looser or general because uh, there's something... When something's like hyper specific, then um, it, or it implicitly puts like a time stamp on it. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it, it puts it in a place and a time. Didn't Ruben Studdard have a song like "I'm Sorry for 2004"? I believe that was, that's <laughs> true. Go, what a what a terrible idea for a song. It's only going to be good for like six months. Yeah, fifteen fifteen minutes later. <laughs> So where can we hear the things that you played tonight? Are they out? Are they uh, I've got a SoundCloud. I'm trying to get everything back up on Spotify. Uh, nice. There's some stuff on Bandcamp, and there's quite a few music videos. I've got tons of music videos on uh, YouTube, so always check that out. And some of the cell phone ones are pretty good, too, so I appreciate all the people that shot those. <laughs> you'll, you'll be quite surprised sometimes. You'll see a cell phone video, and you go, this actually sounds pretty good. It's not so bad. Um, and then some of them are not flattering. <laughs> Maybe I'll send a cease and desist to those. Uh, <laughs> For copyrights. And tell everything moving fast. Yeah, they, they'll catch it and put it out. Yeah. We could. We can catch some Henry in the Wild. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'll try to get all that up there. But there's SoundCloud and Bandcamp and uh, YouTube and everything else. All right. Well, thank you for being here today. Oh, yeah, it's great. Thank you all for having me. This is a great thing you all do here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're happy to have you. Um, before we get out, I need to, to shout out the sponsors. Uh, Backline Supply Company. Uh, Birmingham Mountain Radio, Substrate Radio, and Birmingham Punk Rock Flea Market. Uh, Henry Dongle, Rumi, welcome to Nia. That's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>
After the 